Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Extra Fries. Its continuing mission? To explore scrumptious new worlds. To seek out new food and new flavors. To boldly eat what no one has eaten before. The Star Trek cookbook by Chelsea Monroe Castle takes us across the galaxy to explore the vast variety of foods from the Star Trek universe. This cookbook kinda acts like a guide for new cadets of the Starfleet Academy and teaches the importance of food and meals in intergalactic diplomacy. So this cookbook is a collection of Starfleet sponsored recipes that represent a diverse range of meals from other planets and species, but also incorporating Earth-centric ingredients to enhance the appreciation of those cultures from a human perspective, which I think is a super neat idea. I'll admit, I don't know much about Star Trek, which is why I really appreciate all of the info included in the recipe text. Each recipe tells you which particular Star Trek series it's from and what alien culture it represents. It's also accompanied with a text entry that provides more detail about the dish's cultural significance in that alien world. I really like how the recipe text is laid out. I'm surprised by the amount of info this cookbook is able to squeeze in one page. Lots of helpful recipe info like difficulty, prep and cook time, portions, pairings, and even suggestions on how to plate it to make it look all nice and pretty. And boy does the food look pretty. What's really impressive to me is that most of the dishes actually look pretty alien and out of this world. It has a lot of familiar recipes, but gives them an alien twist by cleverly using ingredients and garnishes that provide unexpected colors and shapes, making a lot of the recipes look wild and outlandish. This book probably has my favorite garnish chapter because a lot of them look really cool and would definitely impress if you executed them correctly. The one thing that I think this book could have used more is more Star Trek related visuals. Maybe some images from the show of some of the planets and alien races. Maybe even screenshots of how some of the food looked like in the episode they were featured in. I think including even just a little bit of those type of images would have made this book more immersive in the Star Trek universe. Oh, and it could also use a better table of contents. One that has all of the recipes listed rather than just the chapters so you can find the individual recipe pages better. Let's go ahead and embark on our journey in galactic gastronomy. We're making three stops for soup, main, and dessert to see if these Star Trek dishes are out of this world. First stop, we go to Vulcan to turn one of its native plants, the plumique, into plumique soup. This is a super simple recipe that starts off with one 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes as a base, Pour that to a medium saucepan and then add in two cups of diced strawberries, half an apple that's been peeled and diced, one teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, and a quarter cup of water. Mix this all together and let this cook on medium low for about 10 minutes until the strawberries and apples are soft. Then add in a quarter cup of creme fraiche or Greek yogurt. I went with Greek yogurt here. When that's added, use an immersion blender to puree the mixture so that no strawberry or apple pieces are left. And that's pretty much it. Super simple, huh? You can serve this hot or you can pop it in the fridge for an hour to serve cool. If you want to go the extra step, strain the soup so that you get a much smoother consistency. The garnishing tips of the recipe also suggest to serve this with some cubes of tomato, apple, and strawberries along with some microgreens. Really loving the rich color of that soup with the contrast of the garnishes. Lastly, you can drizzle some balsamic vinegar on it. I tried to copy the book's plating with those dots of balsamic on the side, but for some reason my drops kept sinking. Maybe my vinegar was too thick? I didn't want to mess it up even further, so I'm quitting while I'm ahead. And that's the Vulcan Plumique Soup, a refreshing and healthy dish so you can live long and prosper. The next stop of our cosmic voyage takes us to Kronos, the home planet of the Klingons. Hopefully our arrival will be met with a feast because I really want to try the Klingon Lingta Roast. The Lingta is a quadruped that's native to Kronos, so unfortunately I don't have access to it from my earthly kitchen, so we'll be using 2 pounds of pork tenderloin instead as the cookbook suggests. Using a sharp knife, Cut a series of slits across the pork going almost all the way to the very bottom but not fully. Make the slices about half inch apart. Then you'll take the slices of two pears that have been cut lengthwise and wedge them into each cut. Transfer this pork pear hybrid onto a lined baking sheet and curl it into a crescent shape. Now in a small bowl, combine one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, a tablespoon of olive oil, and a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. 
Take this mixture and coat the pork all over, making sure to get some into the slices and crevices. Now we're ready to pop this into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes until the pork and pears are cooked through. We're gonna be serving this lingta roast with some sauce, so let's go make some veteran sauce. This sauce is from the planet Ryza, and there's a savory version and a sweet version. We're going with savory. To make the base, add in a saucepan a half cup of granulated sugar, quarter cup of honey, and a splash of water. Stir this over medium heat, and once the sugar has been dissolved, bring it to a boil and let it cook for a few minutes until it turns a rich amber brown in color. For the savory version, we'll have to remove the sauce from the heat and then mix in a one third cup of apple cider vinegar and a tablespoon of white miso paste and combine it well. Then add in half a teaspoon of dried sage and leave that alone for 15 minutes to let the flavors infuse when ready to serve, rewarm the sauce and strain out the sage and we're serving this side by side with our lingta roast. Smells so good that resistance is futile. Our last stop is the planet Qataris for a sweet and decadent end to our meal. Let's go make us some Qatarian pudding. By the way, if I'm mispronouncing all these planets and names guys, I'm so sorry. This one is also super simple and easy to make. In a large bowl, combine one cup of creamy peanut butter, eight ounces of room temp cream cheese, a quarter cup of honey, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Beat this all together until you get a nice smooth consistency. Then in a separate bowl, beat one cup of heavy cream until it gets to the point where you see stiff peaks upon pulling. Add a quarter of this whipped cream to the peanut butter mixture and combine it fully. Then fold in the remaining whipped cream and mix that well. This pudding can be served as is, but the cookbook suggests a pairing with some Orion spice crumble, so let's go make that. In a medium bowl, combine two tablespoons of hot water, a pinch of salt, and a quarter cup of honey. Then the recipe asks to add a quarter cup of the nuts of your choice and a quarter cup of seeds of your choice. Instead, I'm just gonna go with a half a cup of this trail mix that I bought, which has a pretty good variety of both nuts and seeds. Add to that a quarter cup of rolled oats and toss them all together so that everything is evenly coated. Spread this on a lined baking sheet and pop this in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes until it's all caramelized and let that cool for another 10 minutes. Once cooled, place everything in a food processor or blender and add in some more optional add-ins like dried fruit, spices or flavorings you might like. I decided to add in a dash of cinnamon, candied ginger, Chinese five spice and a splash of vanilla. Pulse it all together until you break it down to smaller crumbly pieces. These will last in an airtight container for up to a month. Now I'm just gonna layer the pudding in the crumble like they did in the cookbook photo and top it up with some chocolate chips and there you have it, a smooth and nutty serving of Qatarian pudding. Beam me up, Scotty. It's time to gather in the mess hall and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Starting with a plamique soup, really loving the color of this. Taste-wise, it's very refreshing and I'm digging the tartness. I let it cool down to have it more like a gazpacho and I think it was the right call. The sweet and sour notes of the apples and strawberries go really well with the balsamic and I do think this works best cold. Not gonna lie though, when it comes to soups, I do prefer the more savory types, but I really wanted to try something outside of my usual comfort zone. After all, we are supposed to be having alien food here. I probably won't make this again due to personal preference, but if you like fruity or gazpacho style soups, you might like this one. Now let's try some of this link to roast. I'm dying to sink my teeth into this, and it's not bad. The pear adds a pleasant sweetness and juiciness to the pork, Love the sticky sour contrast of the balsamic glaze as well. I might have overcooked it a tiny bit because it's got quite a chew, but it's not inedible and it's still pretty enjoyable. Let's dip into the veteran sauce. Yep, much better. I kid you not, this veteran sauce reminds me of sweet and sour sauce from Mickey D's. My wife says that I'm crazy, but every time I try it, I'm instantly reminded of McDonald's chicken nuggets. Perhaps space travel has taken its toll on my taste buds. Dessert time, let's get into this Qatarian pudding. I'm a sucker for peanut butter, so I think this is gonna be good. And yeah, this one is pretty decent tasting as well. A bit too rich and thick in terms of the consistency, but the flavor is nice. Loads of peanut butter goodness, and I really like the candy ginger that I added in it. Who knew that would go so well with peanut butter? That Orion spice crumble is absolute bomb. 
The Chinese five spices give it a special oomph, and I just love the combination of sweetness and textures. The pudding itself, I think, has a lot of room for improvement, but this crumble, I will put this on anything. Final verdict of the Star Trek cookbook, a tasteful treat for Trekkies. But show photos would have been cool.